Welcome back everyone, Ming Poo here, and today I have a tutorial on how to replace the CPU and GPU fans. Now, I know some of you may be wondering, why would I want to do something like that? Well, there are a few good reasons. One, the RPMs of the fan may not be performing like they were when it was new. And two, the obvious one, would be noise such as this. Sometimes it sounds like a small rumble when the PC is idle. As soon as the RPMs pick up, it starts to get louder and more noticeable. Lowering the RPMs brings the noise back. This is a sure sign for replacement. Although it's the GPU fan making the noise, we're going to replace both. So before we begin, you will need to take some precautions, I know. And by this, I mean wearing an anti-static wrist strap or working on an anti-static mat. But Mean Poo, you don't do it. Why do I have to? Well, let's just say I've been doing this for a really long time and I'm extra careful. I also own all of my machines and none of them are given to me. So if I break it, it's my loss. I only mention wearing anti-static straps because it's the right way to do things. No one, including professionals, are immune to unforeseen problems when going in. As you know, I have not repasted the machine since July of 2020, and in some of my videos, the temperatures are a little higher than normal. With that said, let's start off by making sure that the AC adapter is unplugged from the machine. Next, if you haven't done so, open the lid to the laptop and shut the computer completely down. At this point, all status indicators should have the LEDs off. Close the lid and turn the machine over. We are going to remove 12 screws from the bottom panel. And by the looks of it, I'm missing a screw from when I sent my machine into Acer some months ago. I'm going to be using a precision screwdriver with a drill bit of 1.5 millimeters. It's also known as a PH000. Having a magnetized driver will make removing the screws a bit easier, but in this instance, I'm going to use some magnets that I have lying around that I use for my projects. Once the screws are removed, get a plastic pry tool and remove the bottom panel. If you don't have a tool, you can use a credit card or anything similar. It's best to start at the bottom left corner. It may be hard at first, but keep working at it and it'll eventually come loose. I've taken my machine apart a few times, so it's a little bit easier for me. With that said, I'm going to just use the pry tool in places that are stubborn. Once the bottom panel is removed, disconnect the battery connector from the motherboard. Removing extra storage, RAM modules, and or Wi-Fi cards is not necessary. Now let's disconnect the right fan. You may want to use a pry tool to have some grip on the notches. While performing this procedure, I'm going to grab the wire from the back and just put a little reverse tension to help with the removal of the connector. Next, let's remove these two screws. After that, remove the black tape on both sides of the fan. It should now come completely out.
Let's do the same thing on the other side. Remove these two screws. Again, remove both sides of the tape. Like the other side, disconnect the fan power connector from the board. As you can see, it's very filthy in there. So for some of you, this could be the cause of some of your heating problems. This is a good time to use some canned air to clean the area. I'm going to use a toothbrush and a vacuum. I know. This looks much better. You can use paper towels to wipe away the loose dirt, the vacuum, or canned air did not get it. Here are the new fans that I ordered from Amazon. I'll have a link to these in the description below. Make sure to put the right fan on the correct side as they are not identical. Hmm, do you know what? Since we're here, I think we need to go ahead and repaste because in some of my previous videos, temps have been a little higher than normal. And I don't know if you know this, but it's been almost two years since I've repasted. So since we're in here, I think it's probably just a good idea to go ahead and do that. So with that said, go ahead and remove the seven screws with the same driver. Here you can see the K5 Pro and the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. Visually, the K5 Pro looks like it's dry just a tad bit and the Cryonaut is still wet. Neither are crusty as in some other videos that I've seen. The K5 Pro comes up easily just using the pry tool and some paper towels.
I'm going to use some dry Q-tips to clean it up a little bit better in some of these tight spaces. As I try to remove the cryo knot, it was being very resistant on the bottommost layer. Scraping with the pry tool was not working and I didn't want to use anything metal as it was scratch. I believe this has happened mainly because one, it was left on a little too long and two, using liquid metal back in July of 2020. I'll have a link to that video when I did that test. I removed the liquid metal after a few weeks but during that time, the heat sink was starting to be affected. Anyway, the other side is displaying the same symptoms. I'm going to use some paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol to try to get this up. It's coming up pretty good, but from my previous test, you can see that the liquid metal has really damaged the heat sink. Using the dry paper towel, I'm going to start removing the old cryo knot from the GPU. We're going to do the same for the CPU. I'm going to use some Q-tips with some alcohol to try to clean it up very nicely and give it a good shine. Almost like new. With a dry paper towel, I'm going to go around the CPU and GPU area to remove the old K5 Pro and thermal grease. Using a Q-tip can help you in some of the tighter areas.
getting back to the heat sink, this cannot be taken off unless you scrub it, but you may cause even more damage. It's already pitting a little bit from the liquid metal test. So like I said before, if you scratch it, it's possible you'll make it worse. The claims you may have heard about gallium eating away at the copper, non-copper heat sinks is very, very true. Now let's do the hardest part of this repaste, and that is applying the K5 Pro. That's my go-to. Even though I've used this many times, it's still a very difficult task. You can create a mess if you let it get out of control. So let's jump in here and get it done. You can use the applicator in larger areas, but since this area is small, I usually try to spoon it out as best I can. You can be generous with the amount you use as it's not conductive and will not short out anything. For thermal grease, I'm going to use the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. I'm going to use the Line method for the CPU and the X method for the GPU. It doesn't really matter what method you use, just as long as you use just enough and not too little. There's plenty of videos showing this, so just use the method you like best. Looking at the heatsink one more time, this was caused by liquid metal and it will not come off even though I cleaned it very thoroughly. Line up the heatsink with the holes on the board and make sure not to smash the Wi-Fi and display cable. The heatsink will feel slightly lifted and that's because the K5 Pro. Don't push down but instead replace the screws which will slowly push down the heatsink into its proper place when turned. You can replace the screws by the numbers on the heatsink or you can put the screws in randomly. I usually make a few passes when putting the screws back in. The first pass is just to get the screws started and the second pass and most likely the third is just to tighten everything down. When finished, go ahead and retrieve the CPU fan. Fit it in place and replace the screws. Do the same thing for the GPU fan. Plug in the GPU cable into the connector on the board. You may want to use the pry tool here to help push it in. Put the cable in the pink organizer. And let's do the same thing on the other side, which is the CPU fan. Going back to the other side, make sure the Wi-Fi cable is in the groove before removing the plastic backing to the tape. Once that is confirmed, remove the left backing to the tape and gradually lay it flat. And do the same for the top. Going to the right side, do the same thing here. Also make sure that the display cable is in the groove of the heatsink. When finished, plug the battery power cable to the board. Before we close up, here is a look at the GPU and CPU fan. They were very filthy and I've cleaned this plenty of times. Go ahead and put the back panel on and make sure to put the screws back in. Again, my laptop is missing a screw, not because of me, but because of Acer when I sent it in for a fix. 
check your machine on all sides to make sure everything is closed. Make sure there are no gaps and if there are, go ahead and push them together. Then proceed to tighten the screws again. Turn your laptop over, open the lid and hit the power button. Make sure the fans are spinning and you hear no odd noises. Unfortunately, this didn't go too smoothly. I dismantled the laptop, pulled out the fan and spun the blade to see if I can pinpoint where the sound was coming from. As you can see, the four wires are making contact with the blade causing the noise. This will be an easy fix as we can just get something thin to slide under the wires and kind of bend them up and away from the blade. Try not to put so much pressure as it is taped down and you could snap the wires. If you don't feel confident in doing this, you can release the wires by removing the tape holding it down. When I reassembled my machine, it sounded just like it was new. Have a listen. Here are the items that I used in the video. Q-tips, K5 Pro, 70% isopropyl alcohol, some small magnets, Thermal Grizzly Crown out of course, and the Precision Driver set that I got from Harbor Freight. I'll have a link to all of these in the description below. I'm sorry if you can hear other noise, but it's because of this going on. Unfortunately, this concludes the tutorial. I hope everything went well for you without issue. And most of all, I hope you learned something as well as save some money by doing it yourself. If you like tutorials such as this, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.